All right, guys, I want to start by saying that if it's a little windy, I'm sorry, I can feel a bit of a breeze, but I don't know how bad it is for you guys. But what I want to show you is last video we done the eyelids on the car, and I used a pretty cheap, crappy vinyl. I'll link it up there if you haven't seen it already. But I said to um sort of cut it up along the body line so you have a bit of flap sort of thing to fold around. Now, I changed that yesterday because it was starting to peel up, and I actually just cut around the actual headlight so that started to go a lot neater and i think that just looks a lot better so if you're having the same problem with yours just cut it like that cut it around your actual headlight just be careful not to cut into the plastic of your headlight so as i've been telling you in a few other videos there's been something that i've been super super keen on doing to the car and i said it was coming pretty soon well um that's today so if you haven't already seen by the title of the video we're installing cutouts on the commodore so i had them welded in yesterday um, I've drove, drove with them closed with no wiring in it. I just had the um, wires sort of taped up. But yeah, they're welded in now. They're just behind the rear muffler, behind the rear wheel, so that you sort of can't see it when it's down on the ground because I think it's illegal in Australia. But I have seen other cars with it coming out from under there with the exhaust and stuff. But I wanted it really hidden because... Well, yeah, New South Wales is pretty strict. I think I should get away with that. Now, I only went and got them um, welded on because, well, I don't know how to weld, but I do know how to wire, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. To make them work, we have to actually put some wires to them and they have little remotes and stuff. So this is what we have. Now, because I have dual, I had to buy two kits. So it comes with like, two uh, module things or controlling units, I guess, two remotes, and then two um, extension lead things. Originally, what I was thinking, because it's just China crap, I was thinking that both the remotes would be on the same frequency and it would be able to, like the same remote be able to, would be able to control both. Now that's not the case, one remote controls one and vice versa. So what I'm actually going to do is, first of all I'm going to be cutting off the cigarette light a bit and hard wiring it in. And then I'm going to cut this and cut this and put them both onto the one, so everything is controlled by the one modulator and one remote, because well, it's just gonna be annoying to be opening two different valves at different times, you know? You want it to open at the same time. And then we have to run the extension cables down through the car to the actual cutouts. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And I'm pretty excited to get this running. Now, <clears throat> last time when we were doing Nick's subwoofer, that house over there, the lady does night shift, which I am, I understand that, but um, her husband come out at like 12 o'clock in the day and yelled at us for playing around with the sub and tuning it and things. So I'm not gonna be able to open it here, but we'll go somewhere else to open it up. Yeah, first things first, we gotta clean everything out of the boot so I can take all this out, take the spare wheel out, take all the side off so I can get my cables down there because if you guys remember from the subwoofer install, that's where my battery is. So my idea is to run the negative part of the modulator thing, obviously to the negative terminal, but have the positive come on the accessory wire, which I'm gonna pinch from the remote wire on the amp, run a cable back into there, so then I can have my modulator and all the cabling and stuff like that stuffed behind the carpet. So let's get started, eh? All right, now that all my stuff out of the boot is removed and I've got access to everything, that's my little cable up there, little green one. Um, I'm not exactly how sh sh not exactly sure how I'm going to run it all yet. I'm thinking either drill a hole down in the like the tire thingo, or I could run out a vent that's out the bottom side that you know all cars have. So I'll figure that out soon. First of all, I'm going to start by taking them both off either side and checking them all out and seeing how they're going, and then I'll um, figure out where my cable's going to run while they're out. So. Let's get into it. All right guys, so out of pure luck, <laughs> this is where I think I'm gonna run it. I think I'm gonna run it through the chassis, like through the main chassis here. It comes out the exact same on the other side, and I got a yellow tongue all the way through it in uh, one shot, which is pretty lucky. I thought I wasn't gonna be able to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the extension cable through here for the other side, and then this one will just come, it'll just go straight up and come up into the rear guard, which come up behind the battery just here. There's like a there's like vents in the back, which um, all cars have. So I think that's just gonna be the easiest way to run both the cables, um, rather than having to drill, drill out like the wheel well and all that, just bring them straight up. Yeah. 
All right, so that went through, that went through actually really well. So I'm happy about that and I've got a bit still here. So I'll pull that the rest of that through once I put all it all up and mount it all and make it all nice. So now I'm gonna get this next one, which is gonna go for that side. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I might have to use the tongue, but I'm gonna try and drop the cable down out the vent and then I'll use this, like I push more out than I need. I'll use it as a draw wire to pull that back up. And then we should have it all ran. Then I've just gotta figure out all the wiring. So this is what we got to work with. So like I said, we got the two modules, two remotes, which I don't know which one does what yet, so we'll figure that out when it's all done. I've got all my connectors over here. I'm going to just use those like spade connector bits so that I can pull it apart if I ever want to. I don't want to solder it together just in case, it, I don't know, I need to pull it apart for some reason. Plus they do, it's just a good connections on your power, so that's fine. So what I'm thinking behind, um, originally I wanted to just, if you see in there, I've already pulled this apart and I thought it was just going to be like a screw connector. Like it's just the cable is pinched under the screw. That's not the case, it's actually soldered onto a circuit board. So I don't want to go playing with the soldering just in case I stuff anything up. So I'm just going to cut it about halfway and then do the same for this one. And then basically I'm going to convert it into something like this, which is just like a two way splitter. But I, I bought this just thinking, oh yeah, I'll just split it, but um, it's actually the wrong way around and they didn't sell the other one. So I need the female, I need two female connectors and one male. So I'm not gonna be able to do that. And I'm just gonna cut and splice into this one. Everyone probably knows how to do that, so I'm just gonna crack on. Now, like I said before, how I'm gonna tap into the remote wire or the accessory wire, or whatever, of the amp, which is this one here. That's, as you can see there, it's a bit tight. There's not much on it. So I've actually taken it off here and I'm going to, sadly, I didn't have any more green. I must've used it all. So this is from my old one, which kills me to run red in there when everything else is green, but I'm just gonna to have to do it. So I'm gonna take that on there and pull it through. Now, you might suggest to cut it there and pull it back. Like, I don't want to cut this cable and then only have this little bit. I want some some extra length here, just in case. I did think of other ways to keep it green, but I'm not gonna be able to. I'm gonna have to do it red, and it'll be easy to pull this way anyway. So, I'm gonna tape on here and pull it all back, and then the red will be in here, and all the joints for the accessory and stuff will be over there. All right. Plug all these in. If I can even get them in. That one. That one. Now I'm just dummy plugging it in first. Not this isn't actually how I'm gonna run it all. I'm gonna heat shrink all the connections as well so they especially under the car so they don't get water and stuff in. But um that's all hooked up. Now the only way for this to power up is for me to have the ignition on. So I turn the ignition on and then I should be out of remote control and theoretically the valve should open when I push the button. Alright, so it's all wired up. We've got our connections running into our leads that go to our valves. We have the power cable, which is just here. That's on the um, accessory, so I have to ignition on for that, like I said. That goes to the negative part. Now I've run the cables, they're all run. So there's that one and the other one's over the far side. Let's see if this works. Got my remote, my re yeah. Got my remote here. Press open. Yes, she works. And up closed. Oh my god. All right, I'm just gonna go through now and clean up all the wiring, make sure it's all good, run it right, do some heat shrink on things, all the boring stuff that you don't really care about. And then I'll put all the car back together and um, we'll go somewhere so we can open these valves up. All right guys, so I just packed up and I come down to the industrial estate because, well, the neighbor doesn't want me revving. Before I do any of that, I'm just gonna explain everything to you just in case you 
you don't understand what the hell I'm talking about and what the hell I just done. So pretty much what I've got going on is no resonators in the mid pipe or anything, so it's a straight pipe. And then I have stock SS quad tip mufflers on the rear. Now that wasn't loud enough. Um, it was. It basically went back to the stock sound, even though I took the resonators out. So I didn't like that, and I bought a set of cutouts. Now they come in two kits. Um, I got them welded on in a spot that's not seen because I'm pretty sure it's illegal in, in uh, New South Wales. So it's welded onto the 90 degree bend of the muffler and it dumps straight out here. Now it's identical to the other side. Pretty much the only difference is I think the motor might be kicked the other way instead of towards the spring it's towards the muffler. Now for the wiring what I've done is pretty much there's a chassis rail running from one like one side to the other and it was quite hollow so I put a tongue down there and pulled my cable back and then I used both cables and went straight up through the side vents they both run up there into the battery compartment where I've got the little modulator thing I wanted only one remote which this is the remote here it's just got a little on off button or open and close button, sorry. All I done was cut the cables and joined them so they both run off the one modulator so I can use one remote to open them at the same time. Now that runs on the amps uh, remote cable, which is a um, accessory cable. So when you turn on your ignition, that gets power, which turns tells the amp to turn on. Uh, but in this case, I'm telling it, I'm using that cable to turn the amp on and to run power to my cutouts. Now the negative just goes to the negative side of the battery, so that's simple. And pretty much that's it. That's all you gotta do. I don't think you guys have really heard what it actually sounds like when it's running or when it's idling with the uh, mufflers on and the straight pipe center. So I'll show you that and then I'll show you the um, cutouts open and I'll obviously I'll let you know when the cutouts are open. I'm hoping you can hear it pretty easily and there's a little bit of wind again. It's a nice day, but it's always windy. So there could be a bit of wind noise and I'm really sorry for that. But yeah, pretty much that's um, that's here how it went. I haven't even heard it yet, so it's going to be a big surprise to me too. <laughs> so let's give it a go. So there you go guys, it sounds like a tractor, but um, oh, it's a bit fluttery, get rid of that, close them up, and look at that, what are you talking about officer, I don't have anything done to my exhaust. So I'll probably get hosed for it sounding a bit like a tractor, but I don't really care, I just wanted it so it's loud and a bit crazy and a bit obnoxious at uh, car meets or something. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I hope you guys liked the video. If you want to try this, give it a go. I'll put the uh, Amazon link down below. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you liked it and leave a comment down below of what you think, apart from hosing me for being like a tractor. Anyway, hope you guys had a good one. See you in the next one. Cheers guys.